Hi, Keith here and welcome to the April 2023 update on our battery and solar installation. And as the title shows, we've seen this month the system performing at a level that has meant our grid import has been minimal. Plus our payment for grid export has also reduced our overall bill quite significantly. So as a reminder, this is our installation setup. So we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, nine panels are on the west facing roof, seven panels are on the east facing roof, and that gives us a total installed solar capacity of 6.16 kilowatts. We also have five pylon batteries with a total storage capacity of 12 kilowatt hours and a Solis 5G inverter. So as we run through the representation of the solar day over the course of the year, let's take a look at the results for April 2023 and look at the significant savings that we've made this month. So let's take a look at the midpoint for the month. Uh, midway through the month on April the 15th, based on the data from timeanddate.com, the sun is rising in the direction of the east-northeast at one minute past six in the morning, and it sets at 1953 in the direction of west-northwest. There is a total of 13 hours and 52 minutes of daylight on this date. The 15th of April has two hours and two minutes more daylight compared to the 15th of March, and at the middle of the day, the sun is 48 degrees above the horizon, which is 14 degrees higher than the same date in March. Weather-wise, we've had a similar amount of rainfall as we saw in March, but still above average for the time of year. Our Netatmo weather station measured 55 millimeters of rain, which is 152% of the average monthly rainfall for April, according to our local Met Office weather station. However, we have had many days with long spells of strong sunshine, and that can be shown by the next graph. And this is where we can see the significant increase in performance for April. Overall, we averaged 21 kilowatt hours of generation per day, and on 11 days, we generated at least 25 kilowatt hours. For the month, we totaled 633 kilowatt hours of solar generation. Our worst day was the 1st of April, but we still generated 7.2 kilowatt hours that day. And our best day was the 29th of April, where we generated 34 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the 29th of April on the Solis Cloud dashboard, you can see that we have a number of peaks and troughs in the morning, and this is due to just intermittent cloud, but the afternoon is pretty consistent generation, to the point where we generated enough through the day to be running 99% of our electricity consumption for the day, either from the panels or from the batteries. And that's according to my calculations, because I think the Solis site actually rounds down slightly. So of the 34.3 kilowatt hours that were generated, we used 7.23 kilowatt hours directly from the panels and we sent 11 kilowatt hours to the batteries and we then exported 17 kilowatt hours back to the grid. And of the 11 kilowatts that we sent to the batteries, we used 8 kilowatt hours. And it should be noted that this was a Saturday and we were actually out of the house that day from about 2 p.m. to quite late in the evening. So our electricity usage in the afternoon was a lot lower than it would normally be for a Saturday. And in terms of peak generation on a daily basis, in terms of kilowatt hours, we saw a maximum of 5.51 kilowatt hours at peak generation on the 12th of April, and a minimum of 1.78 kilowatt hours as a peak generation figure on the 23rd of April. Typically on a daily basis, our peak generation was between two and five and a half kilowatt hours. And for the month on a daily basis, we averaged 4.27 kilowatt hours of peak generation. And here is our electricity usage split between grid import, battery usage, solar usage, and grid export. The 29th of April was the best day in terms of a split between solar generated usage and grid import with 99% of our energy usage being directly from the panels and the batteries. Our best export day was the 4th of April, where we exported 18.4 kilowatt hours back to the grid. And for that entire week, we were on holiday. So once the batteries were full, the system could only export to the grid. In total for the month, we exported 167 kilowatt hours. 
And here is the split between solar generation usage, uh, panels and battery, and grid import for the month. As you can see, we had 16 days in April where 90% and over of our electricity came from solar generation. And for six of those days, we were actually at 99%. For the month in total, 88% of our electricity usage was directly from the solar panels and batteries, with just 12% imported from the grid. And this is what our import cost per day looks like. Uh, the blue is our standing charge, and that's currently at 42 pence per day. And the orange is the grid import cost. And over the course of the month, our average import cost per day is just 80 pence. Uh, it goes up to one pound and 22 pence if you actually factor in the standing charge. So the question is, how did we do in April 2023? As we saw, 88% of our electricity consumption in April was through solar generation, and that was either directly from the panels or from the batteries. Overall, we generated 633 kilowatt hours of electricity, of which we used 169 kilowatt hours directly, exported 167 kilowatt hours back to the grid, and sent 250 kilowatt hours to the batteries. Our grid input cost for April was 36 pounds and 61 pence and that was for just 71 kilowatt hours of electricity. However, we were also paid 19 pounds and 93 pence for our export uh, over the course of April and that reduced our electricity bill to just 16 pounds and 68 pence. So our generated usage would have cost an additional 172 pounds and 92 pence so our total cost, if we hadn't had solar generation and battery storage in place, would have been £209.53 based on our total house usage. So this month has been nothing short of amazing. For context, for the 1st of January to the 31st of March, we generated 664 kilowatt hours. So this means that just in one month in April, we generated the equivalent of 95% of the total generation of the first quarter of this year. We generated over 320 kilowatt hours more than we did in March, and that was a 100% increase, and we sent an additional 116 kilowatt hours to our batteries, and that is an increase compared to last month. We've also saved 75 pounds more than last month on our electricity bill, and we've seen an increase of 40% on our solar utilization so it will probably generate some questions in terms of have i over engineered the performance of the system in summer because if you'll remember i added more panels uh, to the west facing roof uh, and maybe it would have been better to add more battery storage instead however that export tariff does mean i'm getting paid for the excess and the system will still generate decent amounts of solar energy in the autumn and winter months and that will be with the exception of December and January. Uh, but I don't have a view yet of how the system will perform in those months because of the battery issues that we had last year. So that was our April 2023 overview. Next month should be interesting as well. We've continued seeing uh, solar generation usage, usage rates of around 90% and above. And of course, the days are still getting longer so we will still have more daylight hours to generate. As always, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see. And if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. And I'll see you all for the next one.